this morning we need to settle our stomachs and the best way to do that is by having tea. Today we are going to Zilong. So Zilong Tea Estate is actually the only tea plantation and factory in New Zealand which is quite cool. We get there just in time for the morning tour to tell us how the tea, tea is made and stuff. We are walking through a garden with some sculptures which help, you know, depict like how tea is made traditionally back in Asia compared to how it's now made in this tea plantation in New Zealand to give it that organic flavour and taste and um, they pride themselves on this tea being 100% pure New Zealand. It's the purest tea in the world. So the story goes that the guy which started Zilong, which his name is Mr. Chen, was walking around New Zealand and he walked around and saw some camellias. He was really surprised that camellia grow in New Zealand because it's something which is usually specific to Taiwan. Tea are a type of camellia. So he's like, okay, camellia grows in New Zealand. It seems easy to do. I'm going to get some camellia trees and I'm going to make some tea here in New Zealand and that's going to be awesome. And you get 15,000 plants. Put them in customs, now New Zealand customs are pretty tough, so he has to leave them for like two months or something like that. Almost all of them die and he's left with like 70 plants. Now those plants remaining are actually the strongest because they survived the tough customs process. So it's perfect for him, he's getting the strongest plants and you know, reproduce them and, and go slowly and plant them in, in the way cattle because there's a lot of humid and sun and all of that. And now he has like over one and a half million and soon he's gonna have two million plants. And uh, yeah, he's making the best tea in the country, some of the most recognized tea in the world. So yeah, New Zealand is, is an unusual place to make tea. It's not high up in the mountains as tea is made in Asia. We reached the tea house. At the back of the tea house, there's like a ceramic wooden table with some stools to sit on. Like it's quite quite a fancy old table, and we go sit round it with our lovely new friends, who are the four lovely New Zealand ladies. Let's try some tea. The, the table's set up with like so many different apparatus. There's like a saucer with an aroma cup and a tasting cup and then there's several different teapots with filters and then another jug, a timer, a thermometer. This, it's all going on on this table. It, it looks more like a, a science experiment is about to take place here rather than tea tasting. Where I'm from, you're lucky to get a cup, let alone a salsa, for your tea. <laughs> There's five different flavours from Zilong. Starting with green tea, then there's a lighter tea, then there's a, another tea which Robin thinks tastes like popcorn and when he makes this opinion known to everyone else around the table they just all stare back with disbelief and it's an awkward moment. And then the tea flavour goes on to a dark tea and then a black tea, which is like your strong English breakfast tea, as they call it over here. Along the way, while explaining us the whole process, Gavin took the time to make us smell the tea and, and taste some different, you know, teas and, and how to rest it. And, to be fair, it's the best tea I ever had in my life. That's it. You know, it's so much better than your tea bag and everything. And it makes me feel and know tea a bit more personally. I've never actually had proper tea, like fancy tea like this before. And you can really taste the difference and smell the difference. 
Part of the tea tasting experience involves pouring your jug of tea into your aroma cup and then you're putting your tea tasting cup on top of your aroma cup, turning it over, you turn it twice to the left, twice to the right, pull the aroma cup away from the tea and the tea will fill up your tasting cup in a magical way. And this is something that takes us a while to perfect actually. We, we I mean, we get plenty of chances to try to perfect this tea dance. It's always quite fun. You just like pour the tea into the aroma cup, then put the tea cup, no, pour the tea into the aroma cup, put the tasting cup on top of the aroma cup, flip the cups round, do a dance, do a twist, take the aroma cup off, then twist it back round, and bam, you've got yourself some tea. As well as the tea tasting dance, we also do a tea pouring competition. The first time we do this, I am winning. I swear to God, I am winning the tea pouring competition. And Robin just nudges me from the side so that I end up splashing everywhere. And I've never witnessed such bad sportsmanship in my life. Let's see who can go higher. All right, here we go. Competition. Hi, competition. Hi, 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 Higher than you, though. <laughs> Speeding all around. <laughs> she just lost. She just lost. Bloody French. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to try again. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Laura versus Robin. Take two. Alright, they're, they're why, having a why, why do we do the tipping thing? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's really to appreciate the aroma of the tea and its sound oh, and no. the body of the taste. Okay. Oh. Okay. So they call oh. the phoenix and the oh. dragon. Oh. Very good. <laughs> German then goes, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> it wasn't anything like that, but this is how I choose to remember it. Robin's like, I hope it's cake, because he didn't eat enough last night and he hasn't just had enough tea. But it turns out we're gonna be having high tea. I don't know if uh, you guys have seen what high tea looks like, but I've only heard whispers of high tea. You get the uh, plate, of lots of different cakes and stuff and you drink posh tea with it and that's exactly what we did we had a small tart we had tiny little salad bowls we had tiny little other things we had macaroons and this chocolate cake and this really cool like segment of orange which was crystallized and sugary it was quite weird i've never had anything like it it was really nice So long, Zilong. All right, so today I paid my certificate of fitness, which is basically a quick check of the vehicle that I have to do every six months. And then it's a sheet like that, that the mechanic is going to fill up. So when I did like three guys checking the camper van for a certificate of fitness and they all like they grab the light, they ask each other questions, they all look intrigued, I don't know what's happening, it's I don't like it. So yeah, I am stressed. As you can probably guess from the fact that our camper van is a pile of shit on wheels that it failed its certificate of fitness. It was it was a given, really. I don't even know why we bothered. We should have just run that camper van straight into a ditch and called it a day. And we are just like doing a wild goose chase around Hamilton trying to find a place which will fix this camper van in like the next week or so because our certificate of fitness is actually going to run out. And if that does, if that happens, we cannot continue on this road trip until the camper van is fixed. And that would be a bit of an issue to say the least. <laughs> 